In today's video, we're going to teach you how to use Blender's Video Sequence Editor to create transitions like this between any two videos of your choice. In the previous video, I taught how to create this transition overlay, which we're going to incorporate in today's video to create the transition. There's a lot to learn, which is really useful for editing videos that most people didn't know that Blender could actually do. With that, let's go ahead and begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we need to first change it to become the video editor. We can do that by either changing this 3D viewport to the video sequencer, and then choosing this to be not just the sequencer, but the sequencer and preview, which gets us the window that we want. However, another method of getting these two windows is by pressing this little plus button here, going down to video editing and choosing the video editing over here. This will open an additional window towards the left where you can browse your files and click and drag in over here but you can click and drag from your Windows file browser as well. So that doesn't quite matter in my case. So let's say I want to add in this video over here. I can just click and drag it in and it'll be placed. Now, if I was to zoom out, I can see that yes, I happen to place it correctly, but in case you place it somewhere outside, you can always just press G to grab this and just bring it close so that the first frame lands on frame number one. You can see the frame numbers on which it's starting present at the bottom right. So as I move it, you can see which frame it's actually starting on. So I want it to start on frame one, so I'll keep it right there. Now I want this to be a 10 second long video where I have the first video for five seconds and then the second video for the next five seconds. So five seconds implies 300 frames. So I can just click this edge and just bring it down till only 300 frames are present. So somewhere around there should be good enough. I just have to make sure that it is 300 at the bottom right. So now that I have 300 frames, I have to change the end frame so that it becomes 10 seconds long. So I'll make it 600 and now I have the end frame adjusted. Now I can add in the next video. So again, I can do that by dragging into this window or I can click on add movie and then select it from a file browser. So maybe I'll go ahead with this particular render that I had created the other day. So when I click add movie strip, it'll take in a free channel and just get added in, but I want it to be on the same channel and I can just place it here. And as soon as I leave it while it's red, it'll get pushed back to the exact frame right after this one ends. So just doing that places it in perfectly. So you'll see this is actually starting at 301, which is exactly what I want. So now that I have these two placed, if I was to just play back the animation, we'll see that at the junction of these two windows, it's just a hard cut where it just transitions from one video to the other. That's not what I want. I want to actually add in the transition. So for that, now we have to create a new scene where we can play around with the transition. So let's just press this button up here next to the scene to create a new scene. Now we can name this whatever we want. I'll just keep it at scene 001 for now. And this one is going to have to be a compositing window. So let's go ahead and press compositing from up here. Or as usual, you can switch this from the video sequencer to the compositing workspace. But I'll just click compositing over here and I'll check use nodes. Now that I checked use nodes, I get these two nodes here, but I don't actually need the render layers. So with the node wrangler enabled, I'll control right click to just remove this particular connection. Otherwise I could manually disconnect them, but I want to add in the transition video that I had created. So I'm going to click on add input and I'll choose a movie clip and I'll have to then select this button to open up my file browser where I can select the transition clip that I created in the previous video. So once you select it, you can just click open clip and then plug this into the composite. Now you won't be able to see anything. So in order to see it, you can add in a viewer node or with the node wrangler enable control shift click to automatically add in a viewer node. Now every change that I make here, I want it to be occurring to both the viewer and the composite. So I'll press shift right click to just drag between these two lines to get another node so that I can make changes here and it'll apply to both the composite and the viewer. Now to see the viewer, in case you can't see anything, make sure that you have backdrop enabled and that way you should be able to see it. But zooming in and out will only zoom in the nodes. So to actually get the entire thing to fit within frame, you can use the V key on your keyboard to actually zoom in. Similarly, you can press Alt V to actually zoom back in. So V is going to zoom out and Alt V is going to zoom in. Once we have that set, you can press shift A and search for a chroma key node. This particular node is super useful because it's going to make anything that's green completely transparent. So we can actually just select the chroma key and choose the green color by pressing this eyedropper tool and choosing this particular color. The moment we do that, we see it becomes completely transparent. Now, if you go to frame 88 or anything like that, you can clearly see that where we have the transition, the actual transition is occurring. In between as well, we have transparent regions here and the circles exactly as we wanted. Now that we have this scene created, we can go back to our original scene and switch over to our video sequencer once again, ensure that it's sequencer and preview. And again, if you don't wanna keep doing this, you can always just switch over to the video editing workspace just like that. So now we need to add in the clip that we just created. So we click on add, and this time we choose a scene and we can select scene 001 
right over there. So once the scene appears, you have to make sure that this scene is present exactly midway between these particular clips because the way we set it up, it's completely black right at the center. So that's where the transition should occur between this and this clip. So let's just place this exactly midway between the scenes. And also remember that our actual transition was 180 frames long. So we can actually take this and just bring this back to 180 as well. So now you can see at the top right, it is 180 frames long. So this is the proper length. So now just select it and move it such that it is centralized. So once it's perfectly centralized, it should work perfectly. Now you might have situations where, for example, this is 1080 pixels and your actual transitions 4K, it might not be exactly as you expect. So in case it's too large or too small, you can actually just select this particular strip, go down to the transform and play around with the scaling. So by default, the scale would be one. And in case you feel like, yeah, that transition is clearly not the size that it was supposed to be, you can just reduce these scales to maybe 0.5 and things like that. And that way now it fits in perfectly within your scene. So once you're happy with the way this looks, you can always go ahead and choose your output folder wherever you want it to be. Keep your file format at FFmpeg video with the encoding container changed to MPEG4 and an output quality of perceptually lossless. Once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and press render animation. You could add in as many videos as you want and just have this transition or various other transitions as well. This particular technique can also be used to create various VFX effects such as flames, explosions, and almost anything that you can get with a green screen as a background. In fact, you can add in yourself and record other videos with green screens and use them just like this. Beyond that, since we're using the chroma key, it does not have to be a green screen. You could do it with any single color that you want. There's a lot more control as well that you could get by creating masks and things in case you're doing that. But I think that's a little advanced and I'll save that for another video. So until that video comes out, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.